Hey, so you just went to the store. You decided you're going to start prepping. So you made the decision. Good for you. So you went to the store and you picked up all the different things that you needed. You know, you've been watching your videos and doing your research and everything else so you went and you got your canned uh, vegetables and canned potatoes and canned meat and dry goods and dry pasta sugar salt uh, the whole nine yards you came home you stocked everything up and you're sitting there and you're like hmm I feel like I'm forgetting something what did I forget something's missing That's why I'm doing this video called The Top 10 Things New Preppers Forgot. So, what could be the top 10 things? Now, granted, this is just for demonstration purposes, okay? Now, some of these things you may not have and you may have to go go get. These are some basic main things. But you have to take a stockpile of, you know, what you have in your house, in your cupboards, under the sink, in the hallway closet, in the medicine cabinet, whatever else, and make a list. And when you make that list, get yourself a journal, as I've done videos on. A journal, a notepad, go to Walmart, buy a notepad for a dollar, make your life so much easier. You can pick up a nice little journal, you know, for under 20 bucks but it's all in what you want. You can spend a dollar, you can spend 20 bucks. It's just, you know, it's whatever, what it is, what it is. As long as you have some way to make yourself a list of the things that you use on a daily basis, you and your whole family, okay? That's key, not just you, or not just, uh, yeah, you know, your husband, or your kids, or whatever else, what the family uses on a daily basis. And that's what you gotta prep off of. You have to be prepared when you want to start prepping. You want to make sure that you've covered all the bases. As they say, you crossed your T's and dotted your I's and you're good to go. And another thing to also to remember about being prepared for an emergency situation is you want to stay calm, cool, and collected. Because this way here, things will go so much better for you. You run around like a chicken with your head cut off, and it ain't going to be so good. So, let's get going on the top 10 things that new preppers might have forgot. And even maybe some of you old guys. Don't know. These are in no particular order, so we're just going to get going on this. Alright, first thing we're going to talk about is medicine. Now, you have all different types of medicines and everything else that you probably have in your medicine cabinet. All right, so you take a look in there and see, okay, what do we have in here? And you might even find stuff that you're kind of low on. You need to go pick some up. If you do, pick an extra one up to put in your emergency supply kit. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of Tylenol and Moltron. You know, they both kind of run hand in hand, but they do different things and they work differently. You know, I am not a doctor. So if you do not understand how some of these medicines and stuff work, I would advise for you to go onto the computer and find out. Now, you also want to make sure that you have some type of cold medicine. Depending on what time of the year it is and where you live and everything else, having non-liquid cold medicine is the way to go. So we have the gel tablets over here. You can get the regular tablets and we have Alka-Seltzer. Everybody's favorite. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. So, make sure you've got some medicines in case somebody gets sick. If you have kids, you want to make sure that you have kid medicines, not just the adults, but you have the kid medicines, and they do make those. Now, <clears throat> if you've never been through, a, say, a hurricane before, or if, like right now, we have hurricanes going on, and we also have fires out west going on, and the air quality sucks, you know? So after a hurricane, you're dealing with all the debris and everything else, and somebody's roof blew off, and you got insulation everywhere, and wood shavings, and pieces of tree, and debris, and grass, and whatever else could be out there. You know, I could sit here and name an offer all day long. 
you know, and out west, you know, you got the fires with the smoke and the smog and burning the buildings and the Lord knows what kind of a vested products are being released into the smoke, into the atmosphere. So if you have some way to maybe try to get a little bit of relief, allergy medicine. Allergy medicine is your friend in an emergency situation. Make sure that you have it. Make sure that it's in your emergency supplies. Now, the last one on the list here, which is no pun intended, is stuff to help you go to the restroom. You know, almost like a stool softener. Now, you're wondering why I brought that up, all right? After an emergency situation, you have to realize, you don't know what you're gonna be eating, your diet may be changed, you know, and that throws everybody's digestive tract off. Now, as I said before, I am not no doctor or anything else. I'm just speaking from past experiences. So, if you have some way to make sure that you can go to the bathroom and it stays normal, make sure that you have stool softeners so that in an emergency situation, and your diet gets all out of whack, and what you're eating, how you're eating, when you're eating, and everything else, you have something to help keep you regular. Y'all thank me. Now, moving on. Next on the list, toothpaste, all right? Make sure you got extra toothpaste, all right? Um, you can also pick up extra toothbrushes. You can get those at Walmart, get a two pack for a buck 98. Put those into your emergency supply kit. You can buy the small tubes. If you go over to the travel section in Walmart, you can get the small little, uh, like travel size. Um, and you could throw those into your emergency supply kit if you do not want to buy a big box. But you want to make sure that you do have extra toothpaste and toothbrushes and stuff so that you have clean teeth and you have some way to clean your mouth out and everything else. And this way here, you don't have to worry about at that particular point in time, hopefully any cavities or anything else that requires you going to a dentist because in an emergency situation, the dentist isn't there, more than likely that's going to be your spouse with a pair of pliers yanking your tooth out. Pray to God you got some alcohol in the house. Next on the list, rubber gloves, all right? Why rubber gloves? Well, if you have to deal with any type of uh, emergency situation, um, say somebody got hurt, somebody got cut, bad, whatever else, and you're the one that got elected to take care of them. Let's hope you're not allergic to blood and you don't pass out. So you take these and you put these on and it helps keep your hands because more likely, they're not gonna be the cleanest thing in the world and you're gonna be working on somebody with an open wound. So you want to make sure that you have a pair of gloves, okay? They're also good if you have to pick up any type of debris as far as garbage or um, dead animals or that type of thing. You never know what you're going to find after, say, a hurricane or something like that. Um, so having gloves has a lot of purposes. You could even put these on if you have plenty of them. If you are making your food and you're not sure about how clean your hands are, you put these on to help make sure that you do not contaminate what you are cooking. Next on the list, first aid kit. First aid kit is, is your friend, okay? This first aid kit right here, you can go to Walmart, you can buy it probably uh, less than 20 bucks. They have them from like $40 and down, all right? So, you, you know, you spend a little money on it, but you know what, an emergency situation, you gotta have an emergency kit. All right, now I'm not talking just about maybe just having a Band-Aid or two, you know, you gotta have something that has like gauze and tape and everything else, so if somebody got really hurt, you got some way to take care of it. You want a boo-boo kit, buy a box of Band-Aids, put them in a medicine cabinet. Buy something that has some a little bit more to it. Now, I have this one here that stays right into the hall closet, and, you know, that's where this one stays. I have a large pack that I've done several videos on um, that is loaded with all the extra stuff that you could really use if somebody really got hurt. So, a first aid kit of any kind would be your good friend. Now, also remember, all right, if something happens and you did wait to the last minute and all of a sudden all the products are gone, make sure you walk over to the camping section of the store and check over there because, believe it or not, they sell first aid kits over in that section also. Just a little tidbit of information. 
All right, next on the list, hydrogen peroxide. All right, it goes along with first aid kits there. So if somebody has a cut, wound, whatever else, you have some way to clean that thing out so it doesn't get infected and you don't take a chance of them getting really sick or dying or losing a limb, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so hydrogen peroxide is very high up on the list. It's very cheap, so you can buy this. Unfortunately, it is in a liquid form, so you want to make sure that you're storing this properly and try to keep it away from you know anything that could puncture it or anything like that. Hydrogen peroxide can also be used if you follow the directions on the back. Like I said, I am not a doctor. We're going off what is in the back, okay? So it does say that if you do use this, dilute it down a little bit. If Say if you had an abscess tooth or to clean your mouth and stuff out, if you take this and switch it around in your mouth, it will help you know, keep the bacteria and help draw the poison out of the abscess tooth in an emergency situation. Staying right along with the liquids, next on the list, Arabian alcohol. So, if your wife pissed you, pissed you off, or your husband pissed you off, well, here's what you can do. If they got a nice little cut, not a deep cut, but you know, like a nice cut on their finger or whatever else, you grab this, trust me, they'll love you when you hit them with this. And you'll feel good afterwards. So, but anyways, rubbing alcohol comes in handy. It, it can clean like small wounds and stuff. I would not pull it or pour it over anything, did a deep cut or something like that. But you know, a so small scrape or something, it is going to burn. But afterwards, um, it just helps just clean it out. Little tidbit of information talking about cleaning wounds out. In a pinch. And if you're stuck in an emergency situation, if you've got pickle juice, if you have pickles in there, and you have pickle juice. Pickle juice is a natural, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Well, it stops bleeding and it cleans the wound out. You pour it over it and you think this burns? You haven't felt nothing yet, but it does work. I had a chef do it to me once when I was 17 years old. Moving on down the line, we're gonna stay with the liquids. The last liquid of the day is the bleach. All right, bleach has very many options that you can use and that you would like to use this for, okay? One is for cleaning, all right? Now, as you do notice, this one has lavender in it, all right? Uh, my other bleach that I have is packed and stored away, my regular bleach. I did not feel like digging that out, so I figured I would use this as an example because my wife does not like regular bleach, does not like the smell. But if you have regular bleach, all right, you can use that with a dropper and you can dilute your water and purify it. Now, you need to know how to do that. I've done videos on that. But even a container this big, more than likely could last you for quite a while. You can clean with it. You can use it to sterilize your water to help once it's filtered so it make it drinkable. So it kind of kills the bacteria and stuff. But you have to make sure that you know how to do it, because it could kill you. So, do your homework on that one, people. Just don't go pouring this bleach in there because actually all you need is a dropper and it's so many drops per gallon, okay, of water. So something like this could last a long time, but you also have to remember, no scent. Original, regular bleach. All right, moving on down the line. <clears throat> Got a couple things left here. Soap, don't buy the liquid soap. Liquid soap is no good to store for long term, okay? One, um, it, it's just not good for it, okay? It's a liquid, you know, it's hard storing liquids, like, you know, like that kind of stuff and everything else. If it gets in the heat and stuff, you know, Lord knows if it could expand, explode, it could dry up, um, anything like that. So you wanna make sure that you have bar soap. Now, the reason you wanna have bar soap and my opinion is, you see the size of this thing? It is little. So if you had an emergency pack, you could just toss one of these right in there, which I have these in all my packs, just on the chance that, you know, if you are out somewhere and you run across a creek, river, stream, pond, whatever it may be, and you feel safe enough getting into that water without being attacked by whatever could be out there, um, take your bar of soap and you could actually clean yourself and take a bath. 
Now, if you're going to do that, make sure you're doing it in an area where you're not getting your drinking water. Remember that a little uh, tip there. You don't want to have soap suds in your water. Um, so having bar soap on hand is probably a really good thing. Next, wipes. Now you can buy these wipes. You can rate it. Um, Walmart. These are the flushable wipes and everything else. And you're probably wondering why I'm talking about wipes. Okay. Well, we're talking about wipes because if it's a grid down situation or uh, powers out, no water and everything else. But you know what? You still have to go to the bathroom. Now this goes for both men and women. This is made to keep everything down below clean. Okay. So these would come in real handy, especially if you have kids and everything else. It's a good way to make sure that everything below the belt stays nice and clean. If you get what I'm saying, okay? Now these wouldn't be used because they're really not that big. So these wouldn't be really good to say, do your hands or try to take a sponge bath or something. With. In a pinch, I guess you could, but it's not something that you really want to do. All right. But. If you have baby wipes, now it's a different ball game. Okay, so you can use your baby wipes in case of you don't have any extra water to spare for cleaning yourself. You have water to drink and cook with, but you don't have enough to, you know, supply a bath per se for everybody in the family. So that's why you would have baby wipes so that you could take basically like a sponge bath. You know, they come in handy. They're small, they're relatively cheap. You can buy the store brands and everything else, um, but having baby wipes on hand could be a lifesaver to help keep you clean. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, you know, a lot of these products do have to do with the cleanliness of your body. You know, in an emergency situation, it is very, very, very important for you to stay healthy and to stay clean as much as possible. That's why most of these products had to do with cleaning yourself. Because you have to take care of yourself, people. So you wanna make sure that you have some of these products. Now, if you do do, as I suggested in the beginning of this video, and you go back and you look in your own medicine cabinet, underneath the sink, your hall closet, wherever you may store all types of your products that you do use, um, take a, piece of paper, a notebook, a journal, whatever you'd like to do, and write the stuff down. You know, maybe take you a little while, but you know, once you do it once, you have it. And then make sure that you have extra that goes into your stockpile. You know, you could set up a bin for medicines, you could set up a bin for uh, wipes and those type of things. Um, you know, a bin for anything that is liquid, um, all that kind of stuff. It's very easy, simple to do. You know, if you think outside the box, you can get really creative and you can come up with ways to store this stuff so that you have it in case of an emergency situation. So, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope that everybody has learned a little something on the 10, the top 10 things that new preppers might have forgotten and maybe even some of the older ones because maybe they just forgot that they didn't have it because they're old. I don't know. Time will tell. So, as I said before, survival preparedness for beginners. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.